I am doing very well. Yes, I am in Florida. So it's a beautiful day. And it's just exciting to be here talking with you. So well, good. Thank you for having me. I'm excited <laughs> to join certainly. Yes, yes. We had some of your Florida weather, though. It's been a little miserable here today. Oh, <laughs> uh, sending you some uh, warmth and sun. So Thank yes, you. you already have so many people popping on and saying how much they love you. So welcome, uh -oh. guys. Welcome for tuning in to Sheen Magazine, Sheen Talk Live. My name is Jacqueline Valdez. Super excited to be here with you today. So we have Mr. Yet Holmes. You are a district attorney, and you just have been really paving your way and really just a strong woman of integrity and just a beautiful example of what we need. Well, thank you for that. I'm definitely humbled to have been able to serve in the role as DA, having been a former uh, chief magistrate judge and now a partner in my law firm, Gregory Doyle, Calhoun and Rogers. Wow, that's so exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. So tell the viewers about your journey and your background. Oh, wow. Uh, the journey has been amazing. Let me just start there. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, just dreaming as a kid. And yeah. it's always a wonderful thing when your uh, childhood dreams come to fruition. Yeah. So, you know, from law school, going to work for the public defender's office in Baltimore and moving back to Georgia, opening my own law firm, being an assistant prosecutor in both Wow. Uh, the solicitor and DA's office, and wow. then serving as chief magistrate judge before serving as DA. I mean, the journey has just taken me through every position in a courtroom you could have wow. as a lawyer who has focused on criminal defense and prosecution, and then, you know, wow. as a referee and a judge. Right, right. It's so exciting. You've had such an incredible journey and just so many ups and downs and turns and like you said covering every position and you were the first African American to get the chief magistrate judge and district attorney in Cobb County. Yeah so you know um, it all goes back to that dream but when you yeah. don't see somebody who looks like you serving you know in that dream role it feels unattainable but I'm grateful that the work has shown itself yeah. and that now my teenage daughters, other young women um, throughout the courthouse and just in the community who see themselves as an executive yeah. in a company or in a lead role in county government or otherwise have someone to look to yeah. in their community. And so I'm grateful for that. I do not minimize what yeah. that has meant for me and what I hope it means for other people. Yeah, and you are such a huge inspiration. So many, you know, young women and so many women of color that, you know, like you said, there's not that example as often as it should be. And so it's beautiful to see someone that's really strong with their morals and their integrity and really just paving the way. Well, thank you. Yes, yes, of course. Do you find, um, it's very challenging being a woman in the industry. You know, it has been. There yeah. are definitely times where it's been a struggle. You know, when you're serving in roles that aren't just particular to the work, but you're also serving as an administrator with staff, um, as chief magistrate of staff of about 70, as DA of staff of about 150. Wow. And when they've never been led by someone who looks like me, there are some, some challenges and some tests yeah. that you face that your predecessors may not have faced. Wow. Um, so while difficult, I'm grateful that I was able to serve with a team of great people yeah. who were willing to listen to the ideas and a little bit of a shift in process and, and beliefs. And so I was just grateful to have that. How do you stay so um, strong and thick skinned, but also really down to earth and true to your morals? You know, it, it shouldn't be hard. We yeah. ask people that question all the time, yeah. but that should be second nature for us to always strive to do the right things in the right situations. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it is hard and yes, sometimes you don't, you're not successful because you have stuck to your laurels. Uh, character, credibility, integrity, and ethics yeah. is the most important piece yeah. of that. And I know that a small success 
won't benefit me in the long run if, you know, if I don't lead with that integrity and character. Yeah. And I love that. I love that you have stayed true to yourself and there's just so much respect and love for you because of that. Uh, it's humbling. Um, oh. But I, I definitely count it all joy. I've been blessed. Oh. Um, not just in my faith, but in my relationships, friendships. And, you know, again, those people that I've worked with who have lifted me up in times where I didn't feel like I could even lift myself or, or that I was worthy right. of what the next step would be. So, wow. you know, when you have that behind you, it, you just have to get out of your own way. Yeah. and serve in the best way that you know possible. Oh, I love that. That's a beautiful <laughs> and inspiring, beautiful gem that you just dropped. Get out of your own way. <laughs> yes, because I have had to do it on an almost yes. daily basis. But, <laughs> you know, as long as I know that that's a part of my mantra, I know yes. that it's what it takes for me um, yeah. to move through the day and do things that benefit others. Um, yeah. And my day-to-day -day approach on the things that I do, I mean, yeah. I can't, I can't complain. I really can't. Yeah, I love that so much. You have so much love for you. La Tonya says you are a great woman and a great choice for a guest. Yes, we love her at Sheen. And then we also have someone saying um, how beautiful you are. And you are so beautiful on the inside and outside, which is why oh, so many you. people love you. Um, yes. And um, your former boss, Greedy Sweet, said you are her former boss. <laughs> Love you so much. Yes, and everybody check out her cupcakes and cakes. Nice. She's amazing. <laughs> My cupcake lady. <laughs> nice. I love it. You're looking so beautiful and so young. You're such a huge inspiration. Uh, Soki says, miss you tons. Hey, Soki, miss you too. <laughs> you are such a huge inspiration. Oh, I love it. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Please ask away. So yeah, so what exciting things do you have coming up for you? Oh, wow. So, you know, of course, uh, in the new year, I took on the role of partner at criminal, uh, excuse me, Gregory Doyle, Calhoun and Rogers. It's uh -huh. one of our local corporate litigation firms, um, which has not only done a lot in the legal community for the clients that it serves, Right. but has been intentional and wants to do more from a community front. So when I joined Gregory Doyle, I was grateful that they were supportive of what I wanted to continue to do yeah. um, in our community here in Cobb County, Georgia and beyond. And so part of what I'll be working on while I'm at Gregory Doyle is uh, Project Restore 360, um which was an umbrella program that we started while I was in the DA's office that did amazing things just for um, criminal justice reform and creating opportunities for people who had been disenfranchised from employment, education, and housing because of criminal records that right. they were eligible to get restricted from their records and sealed from the wow. courthouse uh, clerk's offices. So we are gonna continue to work um, through Gregory Doyle and through Project Restore 360 to nice. do things like that and youth empowerment activities that nice. just stop the prison, the school to prison pipeline. Nice. And I think that stuff is so important is community and community yes. coming together and everyone lifting and helping each other become better and rise up. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, the 360 that we talk about is that circle. You know, we all have to be full circle partners in the work that happens because it doesn't happen in a silo. It doesn't happen yeah. just uh, individually. We all have to partner together, even organizations that don't seem like they should be paired with criminal justice. Right. We're community members. And so if we're not involved as members of the community, how can you get it done? So yeah. it, that is very important to me and to moving forward with the work that we'll continue to do. And I love that and have so much respect for you in that manner and the fact that you are so uh, connected with your community and so connected in helping with events and helping with charities and helping build others up. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the messages that you all send out with the people 
that you connect with to let the people hear, you know, you're doing the same thing. You want to make sure that your audience knows who's out there who can support them, whether it be in beauty and fashion and, you know, life and what's happening outward. So to be on this platform, I am happy to share those things. Yes, I love it. You do have a question. Um, someone asked for a POP mess surgery in Louisiana. Who would they reach out to help them? Okay. So I, I will give my work email address, which is okay. jholmes, J-H-O-L-M-E-S, at gdcrlaw.com. And she can contact me and I will direct her um, to an attorney who can handle that. Very cool. Um, so as far as like during this whole quarantine and COVID time, have we noticed a lot of shifts in all of the departments and the whole system? Uh, and and technically you're referring to the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. um, so we kept working throughout the pandemic. Um, yeah. I think March 13th of 2020 was the last day that we worked in an office um, all together. Right. But the work of the courts had to continue. Um, yeah. So we worked to make sure that people who were in custody um, had a hearing to determine if out of custody resolutions were best so that we wouldn't have um, full jails. Yeah. Uh, during that time, we made sure to continue to work on the case file so that when the pandemic did open up, if we weren't able to resolve the work before, that they would be ready for trial. Uh, so we continue to do that work in the courthouse that was yeah. necessary for moving the criminal justice system forward. But what was so um, great about that time period, even yeah. in, you know, what people might say was darkness, yeah. is everybody came together to support everybody else. Um, the DA's office, along with um, the law enforcement agencies, uh -huh. the county and their family members work to feed the elderly, to feed oh. all of the public safety departments, the custodians at the local hospital, oh. uh, to make sure that they weren't forgotten, yeah. to, you know, do outside, outdoor bingo was one of the funnest things that we did because the seniors were no longer having their programs at the senior centers. Yeah. So we moved it outside and still gave them the opportunity to have fun at a socially distant, in a socially distanced yeah. way. So, uh -oh. you know, it didn't look the same, but we were doing the work that yeah. as a community, you know, if, if you're worried about public safety issues, you deal with the mental health of people, yeah. you deal with the everyday needs of people so that hopefully yeah. whatever they would decide they needed to do to get those things that was not legal, that yeah. they would make the choice not to do it because they knew there was support from the community so it looked different but that different was probably a great thing and yeah. the people in you know the da's office and all the other offices throughout the county did an amazing job mm -hmm. working remotely and putting the things together to make sure that it still ran yeah and i think that's so important because a lot of things um a lot of topics that aren't talked about is the mental health of a lot of mm -hmm. people during this whole period of time and how a lot of people were really struggling. Yeah. Oh yeah, they were. And it's, it's yeah. a conversation. The mental yeah. health piece is a conversation yeah. that has to continue yeah. um, to happen because the vast majority of things that we see in the criminal justice system that just break our hearts yeah. have a relation to mental health in some way, shape or form. So um, that needs to be a con conversation that continues and I'm always open to be a part of that conversation. Yes, it does need to be talked about um, because people definitely need to be educated. Is yeah. there things that people can do in each community to help um, one another and to help the system? Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, so we always, for instance, if I think about the youth empowerment piece, yeah. is getting involved with programs within the juvenile court and even as mentors in diversion programs that run through other prosecutors' offices. Right. Because, you know, sometimes you have people come into the system who 
receive resolutions that don't lead to conviction or being found delinquent as a juvenile. But what we do is we say, okay, do your 40 hours of community service, right. you know, get a negative drug test and expect that whatever was going on with them that put them in that situation is just miraculously going to go away. Yeah. So if we have more organizations and individuals who can participate as mentors, it will do a world, make a world of difference for, you yeah. know, making those changes. You know, just as community organizations and nonprofits, one of the boards I'm um, an, a member in is the Cobb Community Foundation. And there's a connection on the website, which if you are looking for how you can serve in your community through a nonprofit, it gives a list of registered nonprofits so that you can, you know, um, see how you can help if you can create a fund that will, you know, in fact, help those organizations to do more uh, with the community. Very cool. Yeah. And we will have after the live is up, I will post okay. your information that they can go and find you and follow you too. Awesome. Yeah. So, and it's sad, um, you know, because there is a lot of people that I've witnessed over the years that have had mental health issues. And once, you know, that wasn't really taking care of an approach, there was a lot of repeat patterns in going back to jail and, you know, doing that stuff instead. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to stop that in its tracks. Um, you know, yeah. especially where we talk about young people that we know we can work with to uh, make changes and who can speak to other youth in the school system. Yes, I love that so much. Yes. Um, MB says you would love to be a mentor. Yes. Uh, and we will post that information. You can find out how. And then um, thank you for the information. Your email was written down. Awesome. Yes, and we will put down the journey with Joyette for sure. Awesome. Yeah, so you have just really been, um, you know, stepping your way through and really a huge inspiration for so many people. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, I, I just hope what I've done, again, I have not done individually. It's yeah. come through the hard work and you know, teamwork of the people on this call that you've already shouted out, Latonia Soki, uh, Greedy Sweets. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so I, I just hope that the conversation leads others to want to yeah. do some of the th same things. And that's all of our purpose to yeah. open the door for people to, to new things that they may not have known that they could participate and be involved in and make sure that, you know, there's, a seat at the table or, you know, not even a seat at the table for people, but a room for people to be in and to share their thoughts and manage and just do what's on their heart to do and serve. Yeah. And I feel like when you do serve others, when you do help others, you are happier, you're more fulfilled, and it just makes the environment and the world around you a better place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it absolutely does. Yes, yes, it takes a village for sure. And it's um, exciting to know that you have so many people around you and such a great support system. Oh, yeah. Uh, again, it's not a singular effort. Yeah. So for that person who thinks they can do it all by themselves and who has all the answers, I challenge you to think differently yeah. because it really takes other people's thoughts, other people's yeah. perspective. You know, that's that was probably the biggest impact of being the first female and first African-American in those roles. And that's yeah. the perspective. Wow. Um, you know, you may have worked in the exact same positions, but you don't have the same perspectives all the time based on where you were raised, your, you know, skin color, your religious background, your gender, your sexual orientation. And that difference in perspective makes a difference in outcomes. Right. How, um, what word of advice would you give someone who is wanting to be an example like you are, but they are being turned down or said no, or the <laughs> doors aren't opening up for them? How do they stay motivated and strong? <laughs> keep pushing. You know, I already said, get out of your way. Yes. But 
I had so many no's no. before I had the yeses and have been told no since. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's not about the no. The things that I know um, challenged me, you know, not just as a child, but even as a young adult and now is the fear of failure yeah. and not trying and not doing because you're afraid to fail. Yeah. Well, I tell you those situations that other people would consider failures, losing an election, not being selected for something, right. that, that those are defeats that you can't get over. Yeah. But every time I have been told no has been a stepping stone to another way to serve, a new opportunity, and sometimes broader opportunities um, to serve. So get out of your own way, keep dreaming, keep pressing beyond the no, pressing beyond what others would consider failures. And yes. I, I promise where you are supposed to be, you will be. Uh, I love that, yes, keep dreaming and keep pushing. I love it. Sally said, Joyette for governor. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Do you think you'll ever uh, want to be governor or anything else? So here's the thing. I tell people, because I have said no yeah. to opportunities before I gave it enough thought, yeah. I, unless there's a present opportunity for me to consider, I'm not going to say no. Yeah. However, the roles that I have been in have been politically partisan. Okay. I did not go into those roles because of that, because of any politics. Mm -hmm. But in order to serve, that's where I've had to be. I am not a fan of partisan politics. Okay. Uh, I don't think it's beneficial to the work that has to be done. Mm -hmm. In none of the roles that I've served in thus far in my life, has a decision been made based on party politics. Okay. And so, you know, I, I'm a little bit leery of positions where party politics is, you know, huge front and center when the work should be huge front and center. Right. Yeah. Well, anything um, else you want to tell the viewers? No, just that I, I'm grateful that you were here to listen to what this, you know, young lady from South Georgia had to say this evening. Um, I, I'm just honored to be in the position to even have a place to share a word, to hopefully share the same motivations that the mentors I've had, whether at a distance or sitting across the table from me, have been able to share and pour into me. So thank you. Yes, yes, you're such a huge inspiration. And Sheen Magazine has so much love for you. And I'm just so excited to see your journey and to just keep seeing you inspire so many people and making a change. Well, thank you. The journey is not canceled. So yes. <laughs> continue to follow me. Uh, journey with Joyette, uh, um, you know, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I'm out there. Yes, yes. So Keep shining light. <laughs> yes. I love Thank it. It you. has been such a pleasure and so much fun. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure to be with you as well. Yes. And you're such an amazing role model. Sally says you're classy, uplifting, and you're making other people see <laughs> the best in themselves. Thank you so much, Sally. Oh, oh so much so love sweet. for you. <laughs> yeah, so much love for you. <laughs> Never say no. <laughs> right, right. Yes. Thank you so much. And Sheen Magazine has so much love for you. Thank you guys for tuning in to Sheen Magazine, Sheen Talk. My name is Jacqueline Valdez. Thank you. Bye. Bye, -bye. Take care, love. <laughs>